Spending Cost Accounting, Part 13, Flexible Budgeting and acti Activity-Based Costing. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and a phone number. And a good website, one of the university websites that includes some good PowerPoint and other presentations on these cost accounting topics. I want to go back to a topic we were discussing in uh, section 12, which was the level of output per unit versus per batch. And the question is, where are my costs occurring, or what type of activity is making costs occur? Well, sometimes that's at the output unit level. So maybe in my Levi Strauss example, one pair of pants at a time. Each pair of pants is going to require a certain amount of sewing, and that sewing happens on each pair of pants, and therefore I can tie the cost to the individual number of units or pairs of pants that we produce. On the other hand, costs can occur by group or by batch. And think about a batch of cookies. And I want to go back to Excel. And an example I was using in Cost Accounting 12. So we have Kara's cookies. And she's producing cookies and putting them into cookie tins that you get at Christmas time. So a certain number of cookies go into each tin. And we've got some information here that we will uh, cover a little later. So bachelor level costs are defined as costs that relate to a group of units. You're doing an activity as a company by group. So maybe you're packing cookies in a tin or uh, a dozen golf balls in a golf ball sleeve that's made of plastic. You're doing something with groups of your product rather than individual units of a product or service. So what creates costs? Well, it's possible that these groups of units, the golf balls, the cookie tins, create costs. So the activity in my example here with Kara's cookies is the is the action of actually packing cookies into cookie tins. That is the activity, and that activity is like a sponge that absorbs some costs. That's the way I, I always uh, have people think about it. And specifically that type of cost is direct labor. Somebody, some employee is physically packing the cookies into the cookie tins. And the more batches of cookies they have, the more labor you incur in packing them into tins. So that is our batch cost. The rest of the presentation we can flip over to Excel. We have a static budget, and then we have a budget based on actual amounts. And I put an asterisk by the static budget. And we define it here as a budget that is not adjusted for actual levels of output. If you go back to the very beginning of flexible budgeting, at the far left, of the analysis, you had the static budget amounts, which assumed the level of activity is fixed or known in the budget, and all the costs are fixed and known. So it's the most unflexible budget, which is why we call it static. Static is going to come into play here in just a minute. You'll see that we have a different batch size than we expected. We expected 12 cookies in a batch. We actually use 14. The type of cookie tins really apply to cost 12. We can ignore these individual um, names of cookies. In fact, I'll eliminate them just for simplicity. So running down the chart here, the actual number of cookies produced was 105,000 for the year instead of 100,000. And the number of cookies that go in each tin is different. We expected in our budget, static budget 12, we actually packed 14 per 10. That led to a different number of total batches that we packed. Each batch incurs some labor hours and that number of labor hours is different and the reason that the actual hours were different is you're packaging two more cookies per 10 so it would make sense that the cost varies based on the number of cookies in a 10. And the bigger picture as we covered on PowerPoint the costs vary with the number of batches that you're packing. We have total labor hours and we obviously have a rate of pay that we're paying these employees and in my example that rate paid for labor hour differs between the static budget 
$21. In the actual, you didn't have to pay them as much. It was only $20. All that being said, let's do some analysis. And that is, well, for that actual level of output of 105,000 cookies, how many batches should we have used? And what you're going to find here is, is that once you take the actual number of cookies produced, all the other numbers refer to the static budget. So we actually produced 105,000 cookies. If we divide that by the 12 cookies per 10 that we had in the static budget, we should have produced, based on actual amounts, 8,750 batches. Each one of those batches, when we multiply it by hours per batch, should have generated 148,750 hours of work for the people packaging the tins. And finally, at the labor rate per hour stage, we take the 8,750 batches and we multiply it by the hours. Whoop, let me slide down. I didn't go down far enough. We take the number of hours that we found, taken down here at the bottom. We multiply that by the labor rate that we budgeted for, 21. And we get a flexible budgeting cost of, of 3,123,750. That says, what that means is, is that if we take our actual output, and then apply everything else as static, number of units per batch, number of batches, hours per batch, static labor rate, we come up with the 3.1 million. Our actual costs, which are pulled down, which are linked to the spreadsheet above, and I want to show you the link right there. That's our actual cost. And the reason our actual costs differ is a couple of reasons. We had a number of cookies per 10 that were different. We had labor hours per batch that were different. And we had a labor rate that was different. So all those things were different. And we come up with a variance. The difference between the flexible budget and actual cost is a variance. It turns out to be favorable because our actual costs, two point, almost 2.6 million, were lower than the 3.1 million we expected based on an actual output of $105,000. That's the end of part 10 of our series. You'll find for part 14 on YouTube. Our YouTube channel at Ken Boyd STL, all one word, where you can find all of our videos. You'll also find a complete list of the videos and what they're about in alphabetical order on our website. The website's here, stltest.net. We do live tutoring, live chat sessions using gotomeeting.com. Here's our email address and our phone number, and we'll see you next time.